Hello everyone, this is a tutorial for Heron, a plugin for Rhino and Grasshopper that will allow you to analyze GIS data. So I'm going to walk you through how to download some data sets, how to then bring those into GIS, how to export certain aspects of those data sets out so that you can analyze them in Rhino and Grasshopper, and then how to kind of look at them in Rhino and Grasshopper as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by getting the data set I want. I have it downloaded here. It's the NYC Map Pluto data set, but you can just Google NYC Map Pluto. You'll get this first result here, and you want this shape file. You don't need the shoreline uh, or the water, so you can do the shoreline clipped. You just download it, you'll get a zip file, and it'll give you essentially this data set here. So what I need within this is the shape file, and that's what I'm going to be basically working with. The DBF is a database file that has a lot of information in it as well, but all the plugins we're going to use today just need the shape file. So once I have that, I'm going to open up ArcGIS. I have the desktop version. You should be able to also do this in the web version. Uh, I'm, I'm not a GIS expert by any means. I know how to do a couple things here and there. Um, so I use this desktop version. But if you do need to figure out how to do it on the web version, I would, I would suggest Googling, checking out some solutions. It should be pretty similar to what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to call this Brooklyn Analysis. And I'm going to wait for the map to load, starting a map project. And now I just need to import the data set. I always just drag and drop this in. Shape file, drag and drop it in. It's going to take a second to process, and it'll actually zoom into the location where that data set is. So the nice thing about the GIS data set is it associates the geometry with actual real world locations. So now that I have this, you can see it's all five boroughs together. This is actually every lot in the five boroughs. So I can click on any of these. Um, let's just say I'll click on this one here. I'll get information about it, like the owner, um, the lot, the section block and lot, school district, all of those things. I'm more interested right now in data like what sort of zoning it is. Is it split zoning? Um, what is the area? How much of the building is commercial? How much is residential? And then more importantly, what we can look at today is the FAR. So we have the built FAR and the residential allowable FAR, commercial allowable and facility, community facility allowable FAR. So it's great that they actually give us the allowable FAR on all of those sites. So what I want to do is kind of grab a section of Brooklyn. Um, you can use pretty large sections. What I've found is that while I'm doing the video recording and trying to do the tutorial, uh, it takes a long time to use these large data sets. So I'm going to sort of narrow it down. But you guys can test this out with much larger portions of the city. I don't think I want to use the whole entire five boroughs. So I want to look at a section of Brooklyn. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I'm only selecting from Brooklyn. Now you could just kind of identify that area and select, but I'll show you a, t a trick to filter things down without selection. So if you go into map and then select by attributes, you can actually go where borough is equal to Brooklyn and click apply and then click OK. And if I zoom out, you'll see it's just selecting Brooklyn. It's going to take a second. Let me get to see if I can get this to work. There we go. All right, so it's only selecting Brooklyn. I can right click on this, go to um, data, and then export features. And I'm going to just make sure I'm saving this where I want it to go. This first data set, I don't have to save anywhere specifically, but I'll do it for purposes of illustration. I need to navigate to my folder. I'm going to call this data export one. Click on this, and we'll call this Brooklyn data one. All right. So now that we're there, 
I can just click OK and it's going to take a second. I'll pause the video just because it might take about a minute or so. Okay, I've resumed it and what you see, what it's done is it's actually created another data set over here, a different layer, which is that Brooklyn data. So I can turn off the map Pluto and now I only have the Brooklyn and I can change the color of this just to make sure that I have, if I turn them both on, I can see Brooklyn data overlaid on top of the um, the rest of the data. So if I just um, turn this off, now I have just my Brooklyn data, right? And then I want to look at a section of this. So I can zoom in. Uh, the preview I did is a little strange. Let's make sure we do a black. Uh, that's too heavy. Just a thin black. Maybe we'll do a thin black outline for now. I think there's some um, things about the these previews that might actually have. Oh well, here we go. Let's pick one with an outline. There we go. If we go down a little bit, they actually have they have different outlines on them, not just a solid color. So I can see the lots better. And if I want to select a certain neighborhood in here, what I can do now is I can go to select and I can do it by either lasso or polygon or whatever. I'm just going to do a polygon selection and I'll pick some stuff here that's off of the waterfront. And I'll be, you know, pretty precise, but I'll just come up this way. I want to get like a pretty diverse set. So I'll just come up. I'll pick a bunch of things here. Come here. We'll come back down. We're not going to grab the park because that'll just be a big, large area that doesn't have any FAR. We'll come down here. Let's come back. All right, so that's pretty good. So I'll double click, and now you can see I have this area selected. So what I want to do is do that same export and go to Export Features. I can call this, make sure this is going to the same spot. The tutorial, we'll call this Brooklyn Data 2. Click OK. Click OK. And now it's going to think. And that one went a lot quicker. And now I have this. So this is just a small fraction of the borough, but for the purposes of today, we'll just use this. So now I've got everything that I need out of GIS. I'm going to leave it open for now because we're going to come back here in a second. But now I'm just going to open up Rhino and Grasshopper. So let me just start a new file. I'm going to use large objects feet because all of the GIS data uh, and all of the data that's within that set from like lot area and frontage and all of that is feet. So this way we're working in the same units. And I have a blank file. To install the Heron plugin, you type in package manager and then search for that plugin. Oops, sorry. I uh, can't hit enter. Just type in Heron and then there it is. I already have it installed. So if you go to install, installed, I have it. You would just click here, click install, and then you're good. And they have past versions and things like that. So this is, is really easy. Next, I just open up Grasshopper. And I have this tab now for Heron. This is really easy. I'm going to use the import vector component. So I type in import. There it is. I need to give it the file path for the data I want to import. So I'm going to use a path component, not a data path, a file path. Right click, set one existing file. And then I'm going to go to my desktop, my tutorial two, my data export. And then um, I usually just sort by size and it's the, it's the database file is always larger. So I'm just going to use that. Now I can just take that. Um, actually, I think I, I took the wrong one. Um, I don't want to use the, the data export one. I want to use the, or I'm sorry, I want to use the Brooklyn Data 2 one. So let me just, um, 
I shouldn't have put them in the same folder, but here we are. So this is the shapefile, much smaller. I'm gonna plug that into file path. It's gonna be yellow, or it's, it's gonna stay orange because it's looking for a boundary. So I'm gonna right click on this and just do clip with boundary. I'm gonna turn that off. I don't wanna provide a boundary. So if you wanted to just pull a certain section of the set directly in Grasshopper, you could add a boundary and do clip with boundary. All right, so now it's gray. I have everything I need. And if I do zoom extent here, you'll see that I have that little portion of the map. Now you don't see the lines in between them because these are mesh files. Um, you can kind of see them when the you know when you get that sort of spotlight on it to see the different sections. When a mesh renders in Grasshopper, it blends all the edges together unless you tell it not to, which we'll fix that in a bit. But for now, we'll just use what we have there. What I get is the extents of the data, which is the bounds, which is that curve that's around the whole thing. The fields. This is important. These are all the different essentially headings of all those uh, columns that we looked at before, borough, block, lot, all the way down to built FAR, residential FAR, commercial FAR, etc. Then the values are actually what the values of those are, right? So if I go up to the top and I'm looking at, let's say, the borough, that's the number zero, I get the borough for that property, BK Brooklyn. And they should all be the same, but this is, you know, there was just another one. This is a pretty big list, so it's a little bit hard to navigate through, but this will give us all of the different, so you know, there's the BK as well, and all the other data about the lots, latitude and longitude. It's a lot of, lot of info. So the next last thing is the feature geometry. This is every single mesh. So if I type in mesh, you'll see grab this I get my mesh components there which you can see me selecting here okay so next what I want to do is visualize something about them and I'm gonna focus on the residential FAR of the site so not what has been built or used but what is available because this can help me do an analysis of a neighborhood and understand what is zoned for growth versus what is not zoned for growth so what I can do is take the um, uh, the 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 values, and I need the FAR, the residential FAR. So that is number sixty-eight. So that's the sixty-eighth value in each one of these lists, or it's you know technically the 69th because we're counting zero. But I want that sixty-eight item. So what I'm going to do is use a list item component. And I'm gonna grab the list of um, values, plug that in. I'm gonna delete this just to get it out of the way. Clean this up a little bit. And then I need the 68th value. So I'm gonna type in panel 68. There's my item. Okay, so now coming out of here is all the re available residential FAR. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use what's called a custom preview. So if I do a custom preview, it'll allow me to basically take some geometry. So I'm going to take all of these meshes and visualize them, right? But there's a few things I need to do. First is I need to be able to associate this value with the geometry. And second, I want to color code things based off of different, different, um, different uh, different overall values. Um, I, I don't want it to all be the same color. I want it to be basically a gradient depending on the availability of FAR. So if I come here, the first thing I need to do for that is I need to make sure I am getting, th there's a little discrepancy here, which is why I'm mousing over this. You have 4,537 items here, but here you have 4,538. Now this seems like a minor issue, but I'm gonna show you why it's not. I'm gonna do it wrong the first time, then I'm gonna do it right. So we need to be able to compare these 
lists to each other. So I'm going to flatten this tree so we just have a list of numbers without any tree structure. I'm going to flatten this list of meshes, right? Then what I need to be able to do is, and I'm going to turn off these previews as I go because things will start to not visualize properly. Then what I need to do is I need to do what's called a custom preview, as I said. But then I can use a gradient component, which will help provide a gradient along a scale of different values. So anything that's at the low end of this will appear as this color. Anything that's at the high end of this will appear as this color. Now this default is kind of hard to read between, so we can just go to presets and we'll use something pretty bold for now, like this where red is really low, yellow is somewhere in the middle, blue is, is really high. And what I need to give it here is the lower limit of the gradient, which is going to represent the left side, the upper li limit of the gradient, which is going to represent the right, and then T, which is the number along that it's evaluating it. And then what we do is tell it evaluate this mesh with this value. So in order to get the lower and upper limit, I'm going to just use a bounds component. So this will give me the upper and lower bounds, right? So it'll say 0 0.83 to 1.025. So I think I don't have, oh, I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to use the mesh. I'm supposed to use this 0 to 6.02. That makes a lot more sense. So then I can I need to grab the 0 and the 0 0.62, so I have to use a deconstruct domain. And then if I do this, it gives me the 0 to the 6.02. So I plug in my 0, I plug in my 6.02. All my values are these coming out of here. This is M, which is my material or my color. And my geometry is all of these meshes. So I do that, and this is what I get. Now, this looks cool and it looks interesting, but it's not accurate. And the reason is because of the mismatch in lists, it's not coloring everything appropriately. So again, while this looks cool and like a much more kind of diverse data set, it's, it's not accurate. So what I need to do is the, the, the issue that's occurring here and it took me a little while to figure this out, is sometimes there are multiple meshes within one property line or one property set. So all you need to do here is grab the first item in that mesh set and then plug this into here and it works right. So all you're basically doing is saying, give me the, give me the first item, the, the, the main mesh and not any sort of secondary meshes. So if I turn off this preview, now I'm getting something that makes sense, right? Like the zoning along the street in this area will be one way. Along this area, along this street, it will be another way. Mid block, it'll be different than the ends of the block. It, it makes sense. Whereas the other one did not make sense. Um, so the last thing here is we don't see the edges of the lots, which can be a little bit um, annoying. So I'm just going to come to my mesh here. I'm going to do a mesh edges here. And then I'm going to do a custom preview. And the first edge here, this component gives me all the meshes, uh, the edges, and even the internal. We just want the edges, number one, put them on a custom preview. And I'll hide this. So now we've got the edges of them and we could make those black or white. I'm going to make it uh, use a swatch, plug it in. And now we've got our, um, now we've got our edges. I can make these black if I want to, whatever is easier to, to visualize. So now we have all of the different lots associated with this and the color of the available FAR. So the blue ones, like the darkest blue, which are all the way up here. This is where they're zoned for a lot of growth. And then these are a little bit less so, and then this edge is a little bit more. So these are like those 6.02s and red is zero. So that's probably commercial FAR. 
So if you want, what you can do in order to actually visualize that really quickly is change that 68 to a 69. So if I change this to a 69, it's now visualizing the commercial FAR allowed. So it looks a lot different, um, but it, it kind of is the inverse. Before this was very residential, and now it's not. And up here, um, so yeah, so I'm sorry, this was very residential, and so it had a lot of color in here. Now it's all red because it's not zoned for commercial. Then you have some commercial zoning up here. You have a lot of commercial zoning in these areas and so on. So that's, that's really how you use Heron to kind of visualize data. You could easily go in here and say like, okay, let me see. Let's look at built FAR, which I believe is building area. Um, or no, let's go to, um, residential area 38. So I turn this to 38. That's how much residential area is actually being built. Looks like it might be a little bit skewed. The data might be skewed a lot because you might have some much lower values. So for example, if I come in here, FAR is easy because it's pretty like zero, one, two, three. If I look at the data here, I might see a lot of like really low numbers. And I can do a sort component. So I have a lot of zeros and a lot of like really low numbers and then a few really high numbers. So it's skewing the vis visualization because you have a lot of stuff that's coming down towards here and a lot there. So what you could actually do if you really wanted to as well is do kind of like a um, rather than visualizing it that way um, you could you could do some like um, taking different ranges of things you could reparameterize them in order to make them read a little bit more clearer rather than just having s just so much red the other thing you could do as well is play with this. So if you come in here and right click and go to presets, what if you did this color one, which has a lot more variation? Maybe it doesn't help so much, but could provide a little bit more variation. So that's it. That's how this works. Um, there's lots of different things you can do and lots of different data you could analyze. Um, maybe just for fun, we'll do one last thing. I'm going to move this back to 68 and what I can actually do is I can go to these mesh edges I can let me just see make sure yeah join these and then I can actually extrude them all based off of, I'm gonna take this out so I don't confuse myself. So now I have all these joined curves. I'm gonna flatten this. I'm gonna extrude all these curves by this data, which is the um, available FAR. So let's do it uh, in the Z direction. And I'm actually gonna multiply it by 10 just so we can get make it look really you know make it look a lot taller put that in there move that to there it's probably going to think for a second I, I do have an error but there's some um, if the values are zero it's obviously going to give me a null but that's okay and then let me just um wait for those to cap. I'm going to turn this off just so we don't see it. And here you can actually visualize the height or it's not necessarily how tall the building would be or, or it, you know it could actually be if it was just a maxed out thing. But here you can see where would the tallest buildings be in this area. You could also kind of use this as a graph to visualize the um, the, um, you know, it's a way to kind of do a three-dimensional graph, not necessarily 
visualize the actual bulk of the building because if the footprint of the building is different it'll it'll not look like this but you know it's just a quick example of how you can use the data to do not just color based visualization but also some geometrical geometric based visualization so hope that was helpful and uh, see you soon